What's up everybody? Welcome back. Today we are going to talk about swim jigging and everything you need to know. Listen, we've had a few tournaments, we've had a little tournament vlogs, we do this and do that, but I try to keep things very informative on the channel. So I'm going to go through everything that I know, for the most part, most of what I know, about swim jigs and how and when to use them. Now the big thing with swim jigs is picking a trailer and also picking a jig out. So Let's dive into it right now. I got a whole multiple different jigs set up right here. I have actually four swim jigs set up with different trailers, different, uh, the combination of it all. I'm gonna explain real quick here. Let's dive into it. Okay, so basically real quick here on swim jigs, it's very simple. Um, each swim jig is, is not necessarily created equal. Um, this one right here is a Guggen Bait swim jig. He has a little bit lighter wire hook, so I like him for fluorocarbon. Um, and this is like my 7.3 medium heavy action rod. That's what I like for sort of set up on him. So the lighter the wire, the hook in it, the more of the fluorocarbon jig, the thicker the hook, like this Terminator jig right here, I got braid on him. Th that's sort of like the heavy cover hook. This is sort of like your all around good swim jig. You got grass offshore, you can fish him in heavy cover, but you might bend him out on, 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 the, on the applications throwing braid. So I try to sort of tend to stay away from it if it doesn't have a decent hook or doesn't have a thicker gauge wire hook. Doesn't mean it's bad, just means that it's not necessarily a heavy cover swim jig. Okay, now, as far as trailers go, it's all dependent on the cover that you're fishing. Um, for me, if I want to have more lift, I go with the crack and crawl. So like right here, I got a crack and crawl. It's like what I'm going to do, the, like the Alabama swim jig, I'm swimming him. I go with, I go with him because I want more lift on him. Um, so up shallower, two foot or less, that's what I personally like. If I want to go deeper, let's say I'm out here in the middle of this, this, this grass flat right now. I'm going to go with a swim bait. Here's like a Largo shad. There's a four inch Largo on him and then there's a little three inch Largo. And those are going to be on fluorocarbon most of the time because I'm I'm reeling them out here, and I can fish them in six and seven foot of water. And I'll explain to you guys, and I'll show you cast wise what we're talking about too. And then last but not least is like a jig chunk or like a, a bandito bug. A bandito bug doesn't have a lot of drag to him. Like a crack and craw does. Bandito bug does not. He's more of like a chunk, a typical chunk. Flaps a little bit, but he doesn't have a lot of drag, so it allows you to keep him deeper. Um, so those are really the the main three chunks or three types of soft plastic that I fish when I'm when I'm throwing a swim jig. It's very simple. Um, as far as colors, you can see I have everything under sun. Browns, black blues, uh, whites, white chartreuses. I keep it very simple depending on the water color. The more clear it is, obviously I go more natural. If there's a shad spot, I try to go white. Um, just textbook stuff. So yeah, I keep a lot of swim jigs in my boat, but overall I tend to go back to the few things, the black and the blues, the green pumpkins, and really the white. So let's make a few casts. I'll explain to you and casts and retrieves and what makes these setups a little bit different. Okay, so swim jigging doesn't mean that you always are just swimming. You know, it doesn't mean you always have to be reeling. This is a small little quarter ounce swim jig. Normally I'll fish him, you know, in four foot or less on bigger grass flats. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. That's with the bandito bug right here. So I'll work him a little differently. I'll throw him out there, let him fall. I like to get him to go to the bottom. And it's sort of like a, a just a little, I'll swim him and I'll pump him. I'll just sort of swim him, just sort of swim him, swim him, swim him, swim him, swim him, swim him, swim him. Kill him. Swim in. Kill him. I'm allowing this bait, I'm actually out here in, in eight foot of water. So I'm gonna need a little bit heavier swim jig for the most part normally, but I'll sort of swim him around that stuff. And I can even use a cracking cough for this application. But if I want to get a maximum depth, say you're fishing on a grass edge in 8 to 12 foot of water, I want something that doesn't have as much drag. I want something that has action, but I don't want something that has a lot of drag. So as far as rod setup, 7.3, this is my medium heavy action casting rod right here. Um, this is an 8.3 to 1 gear ratio paradigm casting reel. There's a little bit of grass. See, that's what, that's what we're fishing down there. Those fish are probably set up down there in that grass. Get them out there, let them fall back down. But that's really what it is. You don't, when you want less drag on your bait, you want to get that jig down there a little bit deeper, and you're hopping it. A lot of times, even like when I said, when you swim in it, you would not think this is swimming a jig necessarily. But a lot of times, this is a very effective technique when you're fishing anywhere around the country, Potomac River, uh, Chickamauga, uh, way up north, Minnesota, New York, it just seems to catch fish, especially in the scattered stuff. So you'll see I'm sort of just swimming them around, and I'm letting them fall back down to the bottom. 
And so it just sort of swim, you're swimming in, but you're not that Alabama shake or anything like that. So that's sort of the first one. We'll see if we can get a bite on them so I can show you sort of what I'm talking about. But at least you can see what I'm, what I'm doing and at least sort of get a really good feel for, you know, what I'm, what I'm talking about and what the advantage is to throwing that bandito bug on the back versus, you know, say a crack and crawl um, or something that has going to have a little bit more drag. It's almost like you're fishing a jig, but you're, it's a swim jig. And I'll swim if I get in a little bit of grass, I might snap him, pop him up. All right, so that's sort of what you need to know. It's sort of like a pump, a shake, a little bit different, smaller swim jig, you know, a little bit lighter wire hook for a fluorocarbon hook. There's a fluorocarbon hook, there's a braid hook. Remember that, it's very important. All right, number two. This is just like a regular swim jig. It's got a little bit bigger hook on him, but I got a four inch Largo shed. It's actually a perch color Largo shed. Um, we're looking like a bluegill. So now this guy's a little bit different. I fish him a little bit differently. And I have a three inch Largo on as well. Now the four inch has a little bit more thump. So they're basically the same thing. And all I do with him is very simple. It's a swim bait. It's basically a swim bait, but it's a swim jig. So it's gonna go through that stuff pretty well. Swim him around. And now I will throw braid on this technique. And on this particular setup, it just depends on that hook's a little bit larger for, for a fluorocarbon hook, but I will, there's times I will throw braid. So just, just letting you guys know, but they, as far as the retrieve is really what I want to talk about, because the retrieve is really the key. You're just simply winding it, letting it fall. Like go down to the bottom and you're just winding it in. This is a great grass fishing technique. If you don't catch them doing the, the, the pump and the shake, out there on the edges of stuff and you want to switch it up with a swim jig biggest thing is when somebody when your buddy says hey i'm catching my swim jig or you say are you using a craw or are you using a, a swim bait because that's a very different technique or a very different action on that bait when you do that so you reel this thing around and it's very simple it's just a cast a retrieve cast and retrieve and this is like obviously a deal that they catch them like this in florida they catch them like this all over the country but it's definitely something that uh, if you're looking for more of that roll action, what is happening is your your swim jig is rocking a lot more now. So swim bait allows that swim bait to rock, allows that swim jig to rock a lot more and shake and shimmy, and that's what that's why that that bait does so well. Now, when you go to a smaller swim bait, you know if the fish are say the fish are in you know the fall transition, they're eating small thread fin shad. That's why I'm going to put this four inch swim bait down. If they're using eat normally eating like thread or, or gizzards or bigger bluegill that's when i throw the four inch but when they're eating the smaller bait that's when i'm going to throw the smaller one now one of my favorite setups is actually throw a shad colored largo shad on a goog on this little googan black and blue swim jig i'm really a black and blue swim jig in general but that is a really good swim jig when and what i do is same thing same thing exactly with the bigger one and all these are seven three medium heavy action uh, my signature series seven three medium heavy action seven three to one gear ratio I will go to eight, three to one, um, and I will go to six, three to one. If I want to fish a little bit deeper and I feel like I'm going too fast, I will go to a six, three to one gear ratio. If I'm fishing out there and see, I'm sitting right here in about six foot of water and I'm firing around. Now this is a lot different. This is a lot subtler, but and it's not going to have as much of an aggressive roll because you have that small little kick. It's just going to be like a real small kicking action. So when the fish are eating small thread fin shad, or they just get a little bit fickle and you want a little bit smaller, presentation this is the direction that i will go casting it around firing it around um and that it seems to work very very well now this is not saying that i don't throw a swim bait trailer in that kind of setup right there there's some flooded bushes i'm about to show you here in a second we're going to switch up to the to the crack and crawl on the back of a swim jig and the more of the heavy cover setup. But what I'm saying is more than anything is that swim bait's going to allow you to keep him down a little bit. It's more of a cast, a reel technique. And I will reel him around like isolated clumps. I'll fish him up shallow, but this is more so for that scattered grass or if you're fishing the Tennessee River, winding him around on those grass flats, the good technique to catch some fish. I mean, you got some lily pads right here. And this is when I start to, start to think about some start to think about a little bit of brave they get they get up in him they get up in this little setup Oosh.
little one. So now that you sort of see that, those are the basically the three. Well, I mean, you know, larger swim bait, smaller swim bait. Now on the crack and crawl, heavy cover action stuff, and more of the Alabama shape. DC is big on this. You see him cracking them all the time. Now with this, I'm gonna switch up my rod setup just a little bit. Because I want a little bit softer tip. This is my 7.2 medium heavy action rod. It has a softer tip, has more of a shut off. So it's a little bit different than the medium heavy rod that I use for most of my other techniques. Now, that's the same rod, the 7.3 medium heavy is the rod I use for most of my chatter baits, my vibrating jigs. Um, but this one right here, you know, when I'm using braid, I want a little bit softer of a rod tip. Of course, that's such a smoke tip. Right there, just like that. And that's the reason why you use braid. Oh. Now this one right here, got him. Now, this is actually a new Terminator jig that's coming out. Ot Defoe, ooh, he was not coming off. Design this one. And this is like what I would say is a braided jig hook. You see how it's a little bit bigger gauge? And this is actually a soft, a soft weed guard. So when you hook them, it doesn't take a whole lot to crack them. It's a pretty good fish though, right there. Now I'm gonna go down through here and see, sort of talk about this a little bit. So that fish was right there around those lily pads. See how many of them are up here shallow eating these bluegill. Ooh, I just cracked. My crack and crawl got cracked. Let me go grab a, another crack and crawl real quick. Now, as far as braid, as far as line size, what I use, I normally throw a 30 to a 40 pound braid. 30 pound braid casts better. The lighter the braid, the better it casts. So I try to throw 30 pound suffix 832 or performance braid. There's some new lines coming out. I'll have to tell you guys about a little bit later. Obviously, you can tell with a heavy cover, the reason I got a little bit more line or a little bit heavier line. Now, as far as as far as the casting side and the fluorocarbon side, I know I didn't go through that. Um, I tried to go with 14 out deeper on the outside edges of stuff, and then 17 on the in-between stuff. So that's normally what I'll try to do. And the cool thing about this is you'll see I'm shaking him, I'm throwing slack at him. Now I'm not, I'm keeping this one down a little bit more. And you can throw other crawl type trailers. There's trailers that have even more resistance than say this crack and crawl does. So there's stuff that you can get out there if you wanted to like have even more, like and you wanted to fish a swim jig like a top water, you know, you could throw a bigger paddle tail, bigger crawl type trailer and get that higher lift. But for the most part, crack and crawl, standard all around. You guys see me throw them quite a bit on my swim jigs. Like he just has a good little kick to him. Normally gets, normally gets pretty, 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 pretty much gets fit. Y'all could tell, I, I, you all could definitely tell I wanted to get to the bank. I love casting up shallow. <laughs> little one right there. Way back up in those trees. Bluegill up here for sure. So where the Alabama shake gets its name is the fact that you are flat you are really slapping or not slapping I would say. You are really throwing slack back at the bait. So I'll throw him out there and I'm shaking him, trying to keep him up. Most of the time this is a technique that's used pretty high in the water column. Top foot pretty much this is a foot or less you know you're keeping it up high and a lot of times these fish will bite it pretty high up i mean it's going to be a deal where you shake it there and you're just you know i'll shake him over the top of a lot of that grass almost like you would a frog or a reeling frog and that's what you sort of get you know you could do the alabama shake a little bit deeper Ooh. oh that one smoke it right there that was a gar, or that was a pike. Well, little guy. God, he stole my dang stuff again. All right, now if I'm gonna recommend two swim jigs that I think you guys should grab a hold of, um, as far as the heavy cover one, I would say definitely check out this this Terminator, this new Terminator swim jig. And then on as far as the fluorocarbon one, I, I'm telling you that that Guggen swim jig is really good. It's the right hook. It's the right size weight. They have some good colors in him. Hand tied skirt. They did a really good job with that. They really did. I gotta give them props on that one for sure. So you really need a bolt. You can't sort of get by with just a fluorocarbon swim jig or just a 
heavy covers from jig unless you're you're only gonna do that one thing. Man, that's sucker's squeaky. I'm gonna see how many of them are up here shallow. That's why you have that braid right there. Not the biggest one. But thanks, buddy. And I'll tell you what, I really actually prefer, I'm throwing a 3H right now. I prefer a quarter shallow. I like to almost float him. As the water gets colder, like or you have in pre-spawn, when you're you're trying to keep that bait in the strike zone, you don't really want to catch them. A lot of times you're not going to have them blow it up out of the water in 52, 53, 54 degree water. So you want to have it to where it stays, you know, six, seven, eight inches, maybe even a foot underneath the water. And for me, a quarter or even a five sixteenth is the way to go so that's what i would recommend you know i don't I, I personally don't throw any heavy swim jigs like qu three quarters or anything like that not saying that that can't be a great application to, to use it but for me most of the time it's either up right there oh, i suck you smoked it mm. Good hand, Lucky. That's the one. Nice one. There we go. All right. That's what you give the swim jig. You know, it's just, uh, hey, there's multiple different ways to fish him. And I'm sure there's ways that I do not fish him that I should. So maybe drop a comment below letting me know the way, the fit, your favorite way of fishing a swim jig. Maybe there's a new way that I can learn from you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let this little guy go and we're going to catch a few more. Never, ever, 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 